Greetings everyone, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek, the official Starships collection issue review from Eagle Moss. We have issue 149, crazy number. We have the Crenum Warship from Voyager. So, decent sized model, interesting design and paint job. Let's put that to one side and let's see what goodies lie inside the magazine, shall we? Nice graphic. Um, Decent amount of detail and visible here. You can see the windows and some of the kind of propulsion units. But uh, we do have, it's not, it's not, it's, this is not a ship of peace. Maybe peacekeeping. But uh, it's a warship launched 24th century. No slouch, it's 500 meters. Uh, but it has only a warp capability of six. Um, additional information, chroniton torpedoes, uh, nasty little buggers, delta quadrant, crinum imperium. We have some additional um, close-up shots here as well as you can see and uh, in the magazine we have our four sections the crenum warship uh, designing the ship the uh, shows that unhappened and on-screen appearances interesting mounting here kind of looks like more of a receptacle kind of like a cup based system but uh, we see how that fares out later on in the video so big graphic and um, not sure what these like, looks like a planet that's been mind or something i thought initially it was like a sun but definitely a planet there and um, the crenum used warships armed with chroniton based weaponry to repel any ships that strayed into their territory chroniton torpedoes issued uh, from two launch torpedoes on either side of the nose of the crenum warship these projectiles were in a state of constant temporal flux existing out of normal time and therefore could not be stopped by conventional deflector shields those Bastards. Uh, this meant that the warships were essentially firing on unprotected ships. So we saw one of them land inside undetonated into the uh, the hull of Voyager. Um, you see your CG is kind of very low poly back here, <laughs> to be honest with you. Oh, the year of hell. Um, that was, yeah. That was a killer arc. I, I liked I liked that car. I liked that arc for sure. A lot of nice little tidbits there from a glance. Feel free to pause um, if you can read it. Um, Captain Janeway disengaged the temporal shielding on Voyager. She flew her ship straight into Anorax's temporal warship. Oh, yes. Remember that. And um, here we have some profile shots off the Crenum ship, as you can see here. Anatomy, as you would predict. You have your uh, warp propulsion nacelles, bizarre ram scoops, uh, this random uncolored area, uh, impulse engine as well. Um, interesting to see what the kind of paint scheme looks like here. It just, it just looks very kind of low poly um, on these. So this is a design from the awesome Rick Sternbeck. Uh, illustrator, senior illustrator Rick, said that there was not much time to develop the look of the Crenum warship. After playing around with a few retro-inspired shapes, he came up with the impressive design that he finished off uh, with the bronze and reddish pink hue for the hull panels as well. So that's actually kind of cool. I like the detailing on the front there as well. As you can see it over here in just a black and white uh, sketch. So with just eight months to devise and make a 26 episode season, that is nuts <laughs> on Star Trek Voyager. The production schedule was hectic to say the least. Often at least one new starship would have to be created for each episode. And in the case of the Year of Hell Part 1 and 2, the total of five ships were needed, plus a very damaged looking Voyager. So hell of a lot of work. Hell of a lot of work to um, do. So um, the show that unhappened, so episodes that deal with alternative timelines like the Year of Hell in which events are undone are very popular um, as this analysis shows. So again, it's not the first time that time has played a role in um, Star Trek from TOS right through even to Discovery as well. We had Mud playing some time shenanigans as well. Admiral Janeway, Captain Janeway, pissed off Kez. You know, um, yeah, some nice goodies there to kind of read over an open fire, maybe, as you relax of an eve. Um, so the Crenum Warship, we we'll wrap it up there in the magazine, seen in uh, part one of Voyager, The Year of Hell. So check it out. That two-parter is awesome. 
Uh, coming up very soon, we have issue 150 with the USS Antares NCC 9844, a Miranda variant, not the first. Uh, quite an eclectic Miranda collection now. So that's going to be awesome. So let's close out on the magazine and let's have a look at this warship, shall we? So let's take her out of the box. Let's have a look. Come out, come out, come out. Quite light, actually. There's that kind of cup style. It looks, actually looks all right, I'd say. And as my unit, as my ship falls to the bottom, what do we have? 1266 A-A Crenum Warship. So put that over here. Put that box gently to the ground. And let's have a look at the ship. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I do. You know, I actually kind of I dig this style here. It is kind of very retro. Um, do you know what? I prefer the practical model than some of the renders in the digital magazine there. Um, I like the plastic inserts here that are not painted. That's actually kind of cool. Paint actually looks nice. It's very bold and different, the orange. Like, you know, we're talking about what? Um, the, the Vulcan ships are more of a kind of, they are orange, but kind of like burnt red orange. You have the Kazon, you have the Ferengi. So there are a few kind of orange, like Tin Man, Nausicaan ships. I know the Cardassian ships kind of come across as orange, but they're more kind of gold. But um, this is quite bold orange, kind of like a tiger, tiger red almost. Um, but some of the detailing on the paint here looks much better. Doesn't look as pixelated in certain areas. Um, nice detailing here as well, just on that central unit. Kind of looks like something out of Babylon 5. And that's not, that, that's a compliment as well, because I love the uniqueness of some of the Babylon 5 uh, ship designs as well. But I could see this in the Babylon 5 universe. Um, don't like the seam just breaking up that area. I know it was a bit dull, but um, that's a bit um, not not fantastic, but not the end of the world. But the seam going around the side is it's it's nicely hidden, for sure. The windows are nice and bold, stand out pretty good. You have the torpedo launchers here as well, which is actually quite nice. Which is the, which is the, which is the top and bottom? Hang on. Ugh. That, that, that looks like the, I think, yeah, that looks like the top. <laughs> That's the bottom. So the, yeah, you have your, your main kind of rib going down the top here as well. So yes, there's your dorsal section, your ventral section. Um, nice little detail and just along that little part there as well. Yeah, I like it actually. I like it more than I thought I would. So, that's just gonna clip in here. That's actually, that clips in quite nicely. I could even demo the model like this. Yeah, pretty good. So, paint app looks pretty good. Uh, the sculpt, it's on par. It looks pretty much like what we saw in the TV show. I like the boldness of the paint. And I think Egan Moss did a good job in hiding those seams. I can see the seam is just on the inside here. It's quite light. And not much weight in it. Most of the weight is towards the front, but with a nap mount, it'll kind of have that kind of counter lever effect, putting pressure on the back, kind of keeping it in situ. And I think it's been pretty good to keep that plastic in there as well. So that's awesome. And I say, I do like the detailing just on those kind of slightly lighter components as well. And um, I like this bit of architecture going down the warp nacelles into the buzzard ram scoops. So that's pretty cool. So let's compare it to a ship in the line, get a sense of scale, and uh, we'll go from there then, shall we? So we have the Krenum warship and the Krenum time ship, two massively different scale ships, <laughs> to be honest with you. But um, yeah, even the paint styling here as well is, is dramatically different. You couldn't really say the two of these um, are from the same species, but there is a, there's a reason for that and uh, do check that out in um, A Year of Hell Part 1 and 2 uh, The way the Krenum was advancing with the kind of temporal shenanigans that were afoot as well But um, nice to have an alien race kind of expanded upon in the collection as well Nice to have a singular ship, but if you have one or like if you have two or more 
you can kind of sometimes see the lineage or you know just kind of see that connective tissue between the two ships as well but that'll give you a sense of scale between the two i think it's a really nice model curious to know what you folks think in the comments below so let me know and um it's nice to see that it's nice to have an excuse to take out the the, the time ship as well for a change you know uh but anyway i think we'll wrap it up there for today's issue review thanks to everyone for stopping by for checking out the video commenting liking subscribing big shout out to the patreons of the channel as well um absolutely fantastic that you can support uh, me as well it is an expensive game as you well know um these models are going up and up in price all the freaking time uh but don't tell my wife that or she would absolutely kill me but anyway i digress listen thanks for stopping by have a great rest of the day and i will see you in the next video don't forget fantastic miranda variant the uss Antares, is coming up very soon i've been your local irish tricky and i will see you in the next video so take it easy and bye bye mm -hmm.